Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of the AP Prepper TV show. Super excited to have the first episode out. First episode, about fucking time, mate. Eh? Yeah. What's up first? Up first, we have Nail Dive taking a look at a little game called Ashen. It's coming mm -hmm. out this year. Secondly, we have Bryce and myself. We're going to take a look at his new computer case and do a little review there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lastly, we have Magnesium going back in time. Back in time. Back to 1993 to take a look at a game called Zombies, which is yeah. on the Super Nintendo. It's going to be fucking excellent, hey? Yeah. That's right, we invented time travel. Time travel! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Skin. Oh, the hole's there. Fuck. I was expecting a fucking. Oh. You're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Nail Dive here at the bunker, and uh, today I wanted to let you in on something that's on my wish list, uh, something that Lynx and I saw at PAX, and it's Ashen by Aurora44. It's an action RPG on the Unreal 4 engine, and it looks pretty bloody amazing to me. Anyway, uh, what I love about games, what draws me into playing games, uh, is generally the art style. If I see something that I like, I'll delve down the rabbit hole and uh, try and find out as much as I can. And uh, that's what I've been doing with this game. Ashen takes place uh, in a world that has no sun, uh, and all the light in the game is generated through volcanic eruptions or you know rifts in the earth's surface geological actions which um you know, something that you haven't really seen before i guess and uh, really lends itself to interesting monsters plants uh lore and i hope that this is the case that they're going to create an in-depth lore that uh you know could potentially turn into a franchise if if the game gets the reception that I'm sure they want it to. So you've got a multiplayer based on proximity primarily. So if you're completing a task or you're in an area that someone else around you is doing as well, um, they will passively come into your game. And one of the interesting things that they've also included is the only way that you can communicate with these people is through hand gestures. So if you come across a person, you know, what they do is more about who they are than, you know, having people screaming in microphones or, you know, putting on voices. One of the coolest things about Ashen's character customization is the fact that there are no faces on these characters. So again, the developers are wanting you to experience relationships based on what you do, not what you say, what you look like. There's going to be no ridiculous pink dildo helmets or, you know, <laughs> rocket packs. It's, you know, simple costumes and it's more about the art style, the feeling of the game and those relationships that you develop in the pa passive multiplayer system. the passive multiplayer if you complete uh, certain tasks quests or um, events you can take those people that you meet and make them AIs in your little camp that gives you access to extra services things like blacksmithing uh, asset collection so things like 
scrounging for food, um, which I, I think is a really cool thing. If you if you meet someone and play through part of the game and have this meaningful relationship, that gets to stay with you and your character for the rest of the game. You know, every time you go to your camp, that person's character model is going to be there, and you know, you get to trigger all those memories of. You know, adventuring together or completing a task, killing a boss, you know, and I think that's pretty cool. There's not a whole lot of gameplay uh, and even trailer footage at the moment out for Ashen, which is strange considering that it's been to PAX, it's been at E3, um, and is due for release this year. But what we do see is some pretty awesome stuff, everything from fighting groups of little creatures to epic boss fights, much like uh, you know, Shadow of the Colossus. The devs are, are, are pretty adamant that combat is high risk. But most importantly, and the thing that's totally understated is if you're adventuring with somebody and you lose in combat and you die, you may never see that person again, ever. If you don't complete a task with them uh, and get them back to your camp as an AI, that's, that's a relationship lost. And that's the huge thing that Ashen tries to explore. It's, you know, no talking. No text, you know, it's hand gestures, it's all emotive. There's uh, different styles of combat. Uh, I think the only thing that's really been shown so far is a lot of melee combat, but uh, the devs have said in podcasts and things like that that there will be a range aspect, um, and they just haven't shown anyone that yet. They're specifically wanting to cater to different combat styles and let you really express how you want to play the game through not only your costume, your actions, but also through your combat style. With Ashen, you're looking at lots of geographical features that uh, really help to tie the story together and are the focal point for um, a lot of the things that you'll be doing, whether it's uh, adventuring, you know, trying to collect resources. And there is actually a story, I think I saw somewhere, that said it's about 20 hours worth of gameplay just to complete the story. but the developers are talking about their main focus. They want it to be the passive multiplayer. So that's Ashen. Have a look at the trailers in the links below. Um, there's, Like I said, there's not a whole lot there at the moment, but you know, keep an eye out for this one in the future. <laughs> what are you doing, Cupcake? I'm fucking blowing me lead. That's what I'm doing. Cupcake, man. Not blowing... <laughs> Looks I wish like, someone would shoot me. With that frosting on you, it looks like you blew your wad on That escalated. Me. You blow your wad on your cupcake. Hey, Rick, I'm, guess what? I'm shit at golf. You no, suck. Luke's still on camp. <laughs> no, he's not. What? He is. No, he's not. They got back Friday night. No. Oh. Scrub. I went out to see him. They're all weird. Well, where'd they go? Camp Acacia. In Hull's Camp. If you don't know who Luke Smith is, look him up. He's got red hair. Hey guys, Lynx4 here with Haters. We are doing the Corsair Carbon Spec Omega review. Uh, Bryce picked this up for 139 for PC case gear. Let's check it out. The Corsair Spec Omega is a mid-sized tower featuring front and side tempered glass panelling as well as an integrated LED strip which looks amazing on the front there. At the front we also have two USB 3.0, one mic and one headphone jack. And at the rear we have a 7 PCI expansion slot as well as a 120mm big Corsair exhaust fan. Also some screws are located here for the top and side panel. The glass side panel is held in place with four screws instead of the hinge system which you would see on the higher price cases. 
This is a cheaper, more secure way to go about it, but it would have been nice to see a magnetic strip or something like that, uh, because uh, it could fall taking out that last screw. Screws are separated from the glass using uh, rubber grommets of sorts. Um, they easily fall out and could get lost, which could produce problems in the future. Inside we see support for ATX Micro ATX and also Mini ITX motherboards. We also have standard Corsair grommet cable management and also hard drive cage which supports up to two 3.5 inch and a maximum GPU length 370mm. Using the thumb screws we take off the side panel. Uh, we find lots of cable tie loops to get those cables down in the thin channel between the panel and the motherboard tray. Uh, also we see three nifty 2.5 inch bays which are toolless as well. Underneath the top plastic panel we have access for mounting fans or up to 240mm rad. And I forgot to mention before we can also fit a 280 to 360 rad at the front. This is Bryce's new case as mentioned and we're just slapping this old system into this new case. We have uh, MSI GTX 1080 Cryo Rig A40 CPU cooler, i7-7700K and HyperX Fury DDR4 RAM to go into this. And boom, it's done. The build is fairly smooth, everything fit well, being a mid-size case you would expect it to. Um, the front mount radiator looks a treat with the white fans as well. Uh, we decided to move the LED fan from the front to the rear to show it off a bit more. Issues we did have was the cable management. It would have been nice to see some sort of tie downs in the back, but being at the price it's at, I can see why it's not included. Not having a modular power supply makes it difficult. Um, we had heaps of cables left, so we had to tuck them underneath the 3.5 inch hard drive. So I would suggest having a modular power supply for this case. The only dust filter on the case though is the one under the power supply, which is disappointing to see. And again, that glass side panel would have been better with a magnetic block or something like that. As you see how it is trying to catch it as it uh, falls to commit suicide. Well, this is it in all its glory, the Corsair Spec Omega. It is an attractive case, an attractive price. It's hard for me to say to buy it, as I feel like cases are all down to what pers people personally like about the look, the feel of the case and all that sort of stuff. So, well done Corsair for this one. Nice price, awesome case, looks beautiful. Cheers. We call him Barley Sugar. <laughs> Rick. Shut up, Bryce! <laughs> 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 if we ever get a soundboard, that audio is going to be. Shut up, Bryce! Shut, <laughs> Shut up, Bryce! Shut up, Bryce! Shut up! That was amazing. You should get a soundboard. <laughs> no! I wish someone would kill me. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> he didn't fucking yeah. send her. He didn't fucking send her. Do you remember that time when you were leading by like, like 10? Zombies is a run and gun developed by LucasArts and published by both Konami and LucasArts. Released in 1993 and was known as Zombies Ate My Neighbors outside Europe and Australia. Originally released on both the Super Nintendo and the Sega Mega Drive, it was later ported to the Wii Virtual Console in 2009. So when you first jump into the game, your first choice is to choose either single or co-op player, uh, then selecting either the male or female protagonist, Zeke or Julie. The aim of each level, 48 of such, is to save as many neighbours as possible while fighting the enemies which get harder as you progress. And geez, does it get harder. Oh yes. Oh yes. When you have collected all of your neighbours, or they have met their fate to many monsters in the game, a door to the next level will open. Due to the old school arcade style of this game, it will also give you codes for every few levels you pass. So you're not too disheartened by many restarts you will have, because it's fucking hard. Very, very hard game. 
Uh, the graphics are exactly what you'd expect from a game of such an era, maximizing the popular bird's eye view that was so common on both platforms. The game has aged very well, the graphics do not impact upon the game in the slightest. So the story. The story. Is there a story? Not really, but games didn't need stories. That's true. The story revolves around saving, quotation, your neighbor's average pain in the ass that he can't handle the zombie apocalypse. Many seem to be cooking barbecues, lecturing kids, or bouncing on fucking trampolines instead. There is no real dialogue to further the game's plot, nor does it wish to give any. But you'll be faced with countless enemies throughout the levels, ranging from werewolves, lumberjacks, chucky dolls, and mummies. Another thing worth mentioning is for each neighbour that is killed due to inability to save them won't appear in the upcoming levels, making each loss costly for the upcoming levels that get very hard very quick, which we both know. The moment all your neighbours die, or you lose all your own lives, the game ends. This is where the codes you gather throughout the progress really come in handy. With 48 levels in the game, it will keep you entertained for hours with a huge variety of weapons including your trusty water pistol, bazooka, tomatoes, popsicles and the ultimate weapon, the crucifix, each proving useful in certain situations or against certain enemies. Other than weapons, you have a secondary item mostly dedicated to healing items and a range of potions, some of which can heal you, others turn you into a zombie, or my most preferred that turns your character into a massive werewolf that can tear down enemies and also walls. You will also find keys throughout the game. These will be used on doors that will move you through levels easier, or on cupboards that may have weapons or potions inside. There are thousands of ways you can play this game, and I think that is what really makes it fun, and the replay value is a prominent feature. Definitely, I reckon werewolf potion. The music and sound clips in this game add to the experience, with each level containing its own unique 8-bit track, combined with each enemy and weapon having its own distinct sound clips. Overall, this game is awesome, and after owning it when I was a child, I sourced it a couple of years ago and have had some classic times on it since. I'd recommend this game to anyone who wants that old arcade experience, where you will be challenged but satisfied with a gruelling progression through each level that really encapsulates the era of when this game was released, where you fail over and over again, but you do it better each time. Alternatively, type a high level code into the password section and prepare to be destroyed. Thanks for watching. It's a funny place to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hit the camera guy. Oh! oh. That touched yeah. the pile, I reckon. <laughs> that, that's, is that, is that, is that that's sobbing? Is that this hole? Oh! Is that sobbing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no! Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm crying. <laughs> I don't even look at me when we make love. Eight. Seven. Jesus. <laughs> the, the downfall of Nail Guy. Please don't have to say. Oh, you're. Oh, shit. Oh, you <laughs> fucking bastard. I was gonna go in! No! 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 Well, that's it for this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed watching, hope you liked the content, and I hope you had some laughs. Let us know what you'd like to see in future videos. Follow us for all of our upcoming stuff. It's gonna be good. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be great. Good, is it?
Disneyland. Ooh, yeah. Disneyland. What do we got here?